is growing around the world. Not long ago, Time magazine in America Gazeti linalo famika duniani kote la Marekani had this front page article Lilikuwa na na makala ambayo iliandikwa katika jalada lake America the violent Iliandikwa kwa maneno haya Marekani ambayo ni ya uhalifu au ya vurugu The major cities of America Majiji makuu ya Marekani are unsafe Hayapo salama. Crime is growing. Uhalifu na ungezeka. Now something unusual is happening in the United States. Sasa kitu ambacho si chakawaida kina tokea katika nchi ya Marekani. It never happened before. Aiki kupata kutokea kabla. Ten years ago. Miaka kumi iliopita. Twenty years ago. Miaka ishirini iliopita. Thirty years ago. Miaka selasini iliopita. You would not see this phenomena. Usingeweza kuona hali hii. But today, leo, more children in America watoto wengi zaidi Marekani, in the last five months miezi mitano iliopita, have died because of shootings in school wamekufa kwa sababu ya kupigwa risasi mashuleni, that American soldiers askari wa Marekani, have died in Iraq or Afghanistan. Wamekufa kule Iraq au Afghanistan. The schools of America shule za Marekani, have become unsafe. Crime is increasing. And the Bible says, Jesus says, when lawlessness abounds, when lawlessness comes to your streets, when murder enters your schools, when you're not safe in your home, that is a sign of the coming of Jesus. The homes are becoming unsafe. Divorce is becoming more common. There are more single mothers. Now television has invaded the Western world. The average 18-year-old in America has witnessed 200,000 violent acts on television. And 40,000 murders. Now Africa is in danger. With the internet. With more young people on cell phones. With violence on the in Hollywood. The more we watch violence, the more teenagers are hypnotized by violence. The Bible says, by beholding we become changed. And when kids are playing violence, video games. The society becomes violent through television and the internet excessive violence and sex and a total of indecency have invaded American Western world homes. Now come with me to Africa. Come with me to Tanzania. There was a time when the family was very, very close. 
familia ilikuwa imekaa kama kitu kimoja kweli kweli. And many Tanzanian families. Na familia nyingi za Kitanzania. The family is still very close. Familia bado ni kitu cha karibu zaidi kwa mtu mmoja mmoja. Something unusual is happening in Tanzania. Lakini jambo fulani lisilo la kawaida linatokea pia Tanzania. In the last three years. Katika miaka mitatu iliyopita. Crime has grown 30%. Uhalifu umeongezeka kwa asilimia 30. There is more purse snatchings. Kuna namna mbalimbali za kunyang'anya pochi za watu. More burglaries. Kuna ujambazi unaongezeka. Tanzania is part of the world. Tanzania ni sehemu ya ulimwengu. And around the world crime is growing. Na duniani kote uhalifu unaongezeka unakuwa. More gangs are recruiting younger children. Michezo mingi zaidi ya kiovu inaendelea kuvutia watoto alcohol is, is on the rise Ma, utumi, matumizi ya vileo yanaongezeka drug addiction is on the rise matumizi ya madawa ya kulevya yanaongezeka as you look out at, a, at Tanzanian African society. Unapoiangalia jamii ya Kiafrika katika Tanzania, more and more older people are concerned about their children. Wazee wanazidi zaidi na zaidi kuwa na wasiwasi juu ya watoto wao. They're concerned about rising crime and violence. Wanaojisikia mzigo mzito zaidi juu ya kuongezeka kwa uhalifu na juu ya watoto wao. Now the HIV crisis. Sasa hili zahama na tatizo la HIV largely brought about by sexual immorality ambalo kwa ukubwa zaidi linaeletwa na uhalifu wa maadili katika mambo ya washirati is leaving many children as orphans linaacha watoto wengi wakiwa yatima the leading cause of death kitu ambacho kinaongoza sana katika mauti today katika Tanzania leo 17% of all the deaths asilimia saba ya vifo vyote come as the result of hiv vinatokana na tatizo la ugonjwa unaotokana na HIV. So many people are asking the question. Hivyo wengi wanauliza swali. Where is there a solution? Tatuzi au ufumbuzi uko wapi? Where is there a solution for America? Ufumbuzi uko wapi kwa ajili ya Marekani? Where is there a solution for Europe? Ipo upo wapi ufumbuzi kwa ajili ya Ulaya? Where is there a solution for Africa? Ufumbuzi kwa ajili ya Afrika u wapi? A solution to crime. Ufumbuzi kwa ajili ya uhalifu. A solution to sexual immorality. Ufumbuzi kwa sababu ya matatizo ya uasherati. A solution to alcoholism. Ufumbuzi kwa sababu ya ulevi. A solution to our broken homes and broken families. Ufumbuzi kwa ajili ya nyumba ambazo zinavunjika na familia zinazosambaa. Where is the real solution? Ufumbuzi wa kweli halisi uko. To the HIV crisis. Katika hili zahama la HIV. There is a solution. Hii upo ufumbuzi. And millions of Africans are finding it. Na mamilioni ya waafrika wanaupata huo ufumbuzi. That solution is found in the word of God. Ufumbuzi huo unapatikana kwenye neno la Mungu. That solution is found in the pages of the Bible. Ufumbuzi huo unapatikana katika kurasa za Biblia. Now what does the Bible say? Sasa je, Biblia inasema nini? How does the Bible provide a solution? Kwa nini Biblia inatoa ufumbuzi wa namna gani? To the social problems of society. Kwa ajili ya matatizo ya kijamii yanayozunguka katika jamii zetu. See without a moral compass. Katika tunaona dira ya maadili. We are lost. Bila hiyo tunapotea. God has given us a north star. Mungu ametupatia nyota ya kaskazini. The north star is the Bible. Nyota ya kaskazini ni Biblia. It gives us direction. Inatupatia mwelekeo. It guides us in our journey through this world. Inatuongoza katika safari yetu duniani hapa. Now the Bible says. Sasa Biblia yangu inasema. In the book of Proverbs. Katika kitabu cha Mithali. Chapter 28. Sura ya 28 verse 26 Aya ya 26 the, the Bible says Biblia inasema He who trusts in his own heart is a fool Mwenye kujitumainia moyo wake ni mjinga kwa neno lingine ni mpumbavu What is the Bible called the person that trusts in their own heart everybody Biblia inasemaje juu ya anayejitumainia moyo wake mwenyewe What is that Biblia inasemaje That person is a what Huyo mtu ni namna gani a fool. Another words, they have no wisdom. 
na kwa maneno mengine hawana hekima scores of people today watu walio wengi leo say i'm just going to trust in my own judgment wanasema nitategemea ninaamini juu ya fikra na uamuzi wangu mwenyewe whatever is right for me is right for me chochote kilicho sahi kwangu ni sahi kwangu mwenyewe i don't have to worry about the word of god sihitaji kuwa na wasiwasi juu ya neno la mungu when you cast off the teachings of the word of god ukifuata na kutumainia mafundisho ya neno la mungu when you trust your own wisdom ukitumainia ukiacha kutumainia hekima ya mungu na kutumainia hekima yako back on the commandments of god ukiweka ukiipa kisogo habari ya neno la mungu the bible says this biblia inasema hivi in hosea chapter 8 verse 7 katika hosea sura ya 8 mstari wa 7 the bible says biblia inasema they sow the wind walipanda upepo and they reap the whirlwind na watavuna tufani what does that mean hilo linamaanisha nini what does that mean hicho kinamaanisha nini they sow the wind walipanda upepo and reap the whirlwind na wakavuna tufani if you sow the wind of burglary in your society kama unapanda mbegu ya ujambazi au wizi katika jamii yako you will reap the whirlwind of chaos utavuna tufani ya fujo au vurugu if you sow the wind of adultery ukipanda mbegu ya uzinzi if you sow the wind of sexual immorality ukipanda mbegu ya uasherati you will reap the whirlwind of sexually transmitted diseases and destroy your children utavuna tufani ya magonjwa yatokanayo na zina na utaangamiza na watoto wako if you sow the wind of alcoholism kama utapanda mbegu ya vileo na kunywa pombe you will reap the whirlwind of broken homes destroyed families utavuna tufani ya nyumba zilizovunjika na familia zilizosamba it only takes a little spark inachukua tu mbegu ndogo to ignite a great fire kitu kidogo sana kutengeneza moto mkubwa if you want to destroy tanzania na kama unataka kuangamiza tanzania if you want to destroy africa kama unataka kuiangamiza africa turn your back on the word of god hebu ipe kisogo neno la mungu turn your back on the commandments of god hebu amri za mungu uzipe mgongo it is faithfulness to god the bible says biblia inasema righteousness haki exalts a nation inainua na kutukuza taifa nations are great because nations are good mataifa ni makuu kwa sababu ni mema au mazuri when a nation wakati taifa when a society au jamii turns its back on the word of god inapolipa neno la mungu kisogo turns its back on the commandments of god inapolipa kisogo inapozipa kisogo amri za mungu i am concerned ninakuwa na mashaka i am concerned about america tonight nina wasiwasi juu ya america jioni ya leo america was great america ilikuwa kuu because america was good kwa sababu Amerika ilikuwa nzuri. But the moral foundation of America is crumbling. Lakini msimamo na msingi wa maadili ya Marekani unaanguka. The moral foundation is falling apart. Ule msingi wa maadili umeanguka na kusambaa. So the Bible is calling. Na hivyo Biblia inaita. Jesus is calling. Yesu anaita to obedience kwa ajili ya utii to faithfulness kwa ajili ya uaminifu to commitment to his word kwa ajili ya kujikabidhi katika neno lake now how do you protect moral values in an immoral world sasa wawezaje kutunza au kulinda mambo ya kimaadili katika ulimwengu usio na maadili you begin with one person unaanza na mtu mmoja mmoja you can change your world wewe mwenyewe binafsi waweza kubadilisha ulimwengu wako you can change your family unaweza kubadilisha familia yako you can change your neighborhood unaweza kubadilisha ujirani wako you can change your village unaweza kubadilisha kijiji you can change your city unaweza kubadilisha mji wako you can change your country unaweza kubadilisha nchi yako change always begins with one man daima badiliko huanza na mtu mmoja begins with one woman huanzia katika mwanamme mmoja mwanamke mmoja 
committed to God. Now in this series, we're studying the last book of the Bible. We are studying the book of Revelation. And Revelation has a special end time message. That message is found in Revelation 14. We will continue to study this message. Revelation 14 verse 6. And I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those that dwell on the earth to every nation, kindred, tongue and people we studied part of that message last evening but the message goes on it says fear God give glory to him for the hour of God's judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth the sea and the fountains of water. Revelation's message says this. The hour of God's judgment is come. One American politician was asked what is the most solemn thought that ever passed your mind? And he said this. The thought is this. That one day I will stand before the judgment bar of God. The record of our lives is being recorded in heaven. Every secret sin, everything you've ever done under the cloak of darkness, you and I have a date with destiny. One day, our names will come up before God in judgment. And Jesus is appealing to you and to me to come to him to let his grace forgive our sins to be changed by his power you know, the Bible says, Fear God. Give glory to Him. The hour of His judgment has come. We are living in the judgment hour. The destinies of all human beings are being decided. Now, the judgment calls us to accountability for our actions. The judgment says you are responsible for the way that you live. The judgment says that every deed will appear before God. Every word will appear before God. And Jesus Christ says, Na Yesu Christo, no matter what your past, I will change your life. I will forgive your sins. I will present my blood and grace before the Father for you. A number of years ago, in Bulgaria, meetings were being held like this. A friend of mine was preaching. Hundreds were coming to those meetings. The streets were jammed with people coming to the meetings. 
kings. Na barabara zikuwa zimesonga kwa sababu watu walikuwa wengi wakija mikutano. It was just after the fall of communism. Nilikuwa ni mara baada ya kuanguka kwa ukomunisti. And people wanted to hear the word of God. Watu walikuwa wakiwa na shauku sana ya kusikia neno la Mungu. There was a man sitting in a bar. Kulikuwa na mtu aliyekuwa ameketi kwenye kilabu cha pombe. Next to the auditorium. Akiwa karibu na ukumbi huo mkutano. He was mkutana. drinking and drinking. Alikuwa akinywa na kunywa. He had been drinking for 20 years. Alikuwa amekunywa kwa muda wa miaka 20. Had hardly had one day in 20 years we was not drunk. Ni vigumu kufikiri kwamba alikuwa hata na siku moja katika miaka 20 ambayo hakunywa pombe. Aliona watu wakija mkutanoni. I have met this man. Nilimekutana na mtu huyo. I interviewed him. Nilimfanyia usaili, nilimhoji. He joined with the crowds coming to the meeting. Akaungana na mkutano kuja mkutanoni. He came to the meeting drunk. Akaja na watu katika mkutano akiwa amelewa. He slept through the entire meeting. Alikuwa amelala wakati wote wa mkutano. Left the meeting? Aliondoka mkutanoni. Went back to the bar? Akarudi katika kilabu cha pombe. Drunk more. Akaendelea kunywa. The next night na usiku uliofuata He was sitting in the bar. Alikuwa ameketi katika kilabu cha pombe. Saw the people coming to the meeting. Akaona watu wakifurika kuja mkutanoni. Wandered into the meeting. Akaendelea kutembea hivi kama vile Tanga Tangaye katika mkutano half drunk. Akiwa nusu amelewa. When the preacher friend of mine said, Mchungaji marafiki yangu aliposema, You will appear before the judgment bar of God. Utatokea utasimama mbele za kiti za hukumu au kiti cha hukumu cha Mungu. But tonight lakini usiku wa leo Jesus appeals to you. Yesu anakuita. He can pardon your sins. Yupo tayari kusamehe dhambi zako. He can change your life. Na kubadili maisha yako. That half drunk man. Yule mtu aliyekuwa nusu amelewa. Gave his life to Jesus that night. Alimpa Yesu maisha jioni ile. And he did not drink one drop for the next 30 years. Na hakunywa tena kitata tone moja la pombe kwa miaka 30 I met him as an old man. Nilikutana naye akiwa mzee sasa. He said that night. Akasema usiku ule. Jesus changed my life. Yesu alibadilisha maisha yangu. Jesus is going to touch somebody tonight. Yesu atagusa mtu hapa jioni ya leo. Jesus is going to come into somebody's life tonight. Yesu ataingia ndani ya maisha ya mtu fulani jioni ya leo. Jesus is going to deliver somebody tonight. Yesu atamkomboa mtu fulani jioni ya leo. It may be you. Inawezekana ni wewe. Jesus may visit you tonight right in this meeting. Yes Yesu anakutembelea jioni ya leo hapa hapa kwenye mkutano huu. Nafikiria juu ya huyu aliyekuja kwenye mkutano yangu pale Urusi. I had preached the first session. Nilikuwa nimehubiri mkutano wa awali. There were two sessions every night. Kulikuwa na mikutano wa vipindi viwili kila jioni. And after the first session. Na baada ya kipindi cha kwanza. I had preached. Nilihubiri. I was sitting in a little office getting ready to preach again. Nilikuwa nimeketi katika ofisi moja ndogo nikijiandaa kuhubiri tena. A man came in. Mtu mmoja akaingia. He had long hair. Alikuwa na nywele ndefu. He had a deep scar down his face. Alikuwa na kovu kubwa upande wa kulia wa uso wake. And he came in shouting in Russian. Na akawa akaja huko akipiga kelele kwa lugha ya Kirusi. I had no idea what he was saying. Sikujua anamaanisha nini alichokuwa akisema. He was a rough man. Alikuwa mtu aliyeharibikiwa. He was the thief of Moscow. Alikuwa mwizi wa jiji la Moscow. He had been in jail 27 times. Alikuwa amepata kufungwa gerezani mara 27. He came into my office. Akaingia kwenye ofisi yangu. He was yelling. Alikuwa anapiga kelele. This were up. Alikuwa ameinua ngumi juu. And I didn't know if he was going to attack me or not. Na nilikuwa nikijiuliza sijui anataka kunipiga au la. But then my translator said. Lakini mkalimani wangu akasema. This man is troubled. Mtu huyu ana matatizo. You talked about Jesus. Ulinena juu ya Yesu. He wants to be changed. Anataka kubadilishwa. He wants to be a new man. Anataka kuwa mtu mpya. He wants to keep the commandments of God. Anataka kushika amri za Mungu. But he is weak and he needs strength. Lakini yupo ni mdhaifu katika nguvu zake. We knelt on the ground. Tukapiga magoti pale. We prayed to Jesus. Tukamuomba Yesu. The power of God came down. Nguvu ya Mungu ikashuka. And that man got off his knees. Na yule mtu akainuka kutoka kwenye magoti. He said I want a new life in Christ. Akasema nataka maisha mapya katika Kristo. One year later. Mwaka mmoja baadaye. I came back to Moscow. Nikarejea Moscow. And I was sitting there in the church. Na nikawa nimeketi pale and the choir got up to sing and as the choir was singing 
na kwaya ilipokuwa ikiimba my translator said to me mkalimani wangu akaniambia you are going to love this choir utaipenda hii kwaya he said everyone in that choir akasema kila mmoja katika kwaya hii all 30 or 40 of those people watu kama 30 hadi 40 hivi were baptized walibatizwa in the name of the father son and the holy spirit katika jina la baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu the last time you were here lile safari ya mwisho ulipokuja hapa this is a choir of new converts hii ni kwaya ya waongofu wapya and as i sat there na nilipokuwa nimeketi who is that man on the end nikasema ni nani yule mwanamme pale mwisho pale that man who is smiling yule mtu ambaye anatabasamu nzuri that young man with such peace in his life huyo kijana alionekana na amani maishani mwake that young man with such joy in his soul huyo kijana alionekana na furaha nafsini mwake you don't remember him Je, unamkumbuka? No, I don't remember him. Nikasema la 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 simkumbuki. Who is that young man? Huyo kijana ni nani? He is the thief of Moscow. Huyo alikuwa yule mwizi wa Moscow. He is that young man. Ni yule kijana. That you prayed over. Ambaye uliomba kwa ajili yake. God's grace. Neema ya Mungu. Can take any life. Inaweza kuchukua maisha yoyote. And us to obedience to God. Na kuileta katika namna itakayotii litamtii Mungu. The society we live in. Jamii ambayo tunaishi ndani yake. Says you are not responsible for your actions. Kusema ya kwamba huwajibiki sana kwa matendo yako. Jesus says. Yesu anasema. Come to me. Njoni kwangu whatever your past haijalishi wakati wako uliopita ulikuwaje Yesu asema nitakusamehe Jesus says I'll change your life Yesu anasema nitabadilisha maisha yako I will lead you to be obedient nitakufanya uwe mtiifu Now the judgment says Sasa hukumu inasema We are responsible for what we do Tunawajibika kwa kile tunachokifanya Now God's law Sasa sheria ya Mungu is the basis of the judgment Ndio mkanuni ya msingi ya hukumu Some Christians make a great mistake. Baadhi wa Kristo wanasema. They cast off God's law. Wanatupilia mbali sheria ya Mungu. James chapter 2 verse 12 says this. Yakobo sura ya pili mstari wa 12 inasema. God's law. Inasema sheria ya Mungu. The 10 commandments. Amri kumi za Mungu. Are not legalistic requirements. Sio masharti yatokanayo na imani kwa matendo. James 2 verse 12 says. Waraka wa Yakobo 2:12. So speak and so do. Semeni ninyi na kutenda. That you'll be judged by the law of liberty. Kama watu watakao hukumiwa kwa sheria ya uhuru. Now Mwanza help me tonight. Sasa Mwanza nisaidieni jioni ya leo. Help me with the sermon tonight. Hebu nisaidieni katika hubiri hii jioni ya leo. Law is called the law of what according to the Bible? Sheria ya Mungu inaitwa sheria ya nini kulingana na Biblia? The law of what? Sheria ya nini? Sema kwa sauti sheria ya nini? Sheria ya nini? The law of liberty. Sheria ya uhuru. You see God's 10 commandment law. Sasa unaona sheria ya Mungu is not some legalistic requirement. Sio, sa, sio kanuni fulani ambayo inataka matendo ya kimwili ya kila yako binafsi. The commandment that says thou shalt not kill. Na, ha, ha, inaweza kusema usi, usiuwe. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Katika uh, kutoka sura ya 20 fungu la 13. That commandment. Hiyo amri protects our life. Inatunza na kulinda maisha yetu. Every government law. Kila sheria ya serikali. That says thou shalt not kill. Isemayo wewe usiuwe finds its authority inapata mamlaka yake in the law of god katika sheria ya mungu let's take the law that says thou shall not commit adultery hebu tuichukulie hii inayosema usizini that protects families hiyo inalinda familia it protects moral purity inalinda maadili na usafi wa maadili let's take the law that says thou shall not steal hebu tuangalie isemayo usiibe that protects our property rights. Hiyo inalinda haki za vitu ambavyo bwana ameziviweka mikononi mwetu. Now suppose you lived in a society. Hebu tafadhali fikiri kama ungeishi katika jamii. That had no laws against stealing. Ambayo haina sheria dhidi ya kuua. No laws against killing. Hakuna sheria dhidi ya mauaji. No laws against somebody taking your wife and committing adultery. 
Hakuna sheria dhidi ya, ku, ya mtu ambaye anakuja kukunyang'anya mke wako na kuzini naye. What would that society be like? Hiyo jamii ingekuaje? It would be a horrible society. Ingekuwa jamii mbaya. People would live in fear. Watu wangeishi kwa hofu. The Ten Commandment law la sheria ya amri kumi is not some legalistic requirement given to the Jews. Sio masharti ya kimatendo yanayohitaji matendo ya kimwili kutoka kwa kwa ajili ya Wayahudi. It is the foundation of God's throne. Ni msingi wa kiti cha enzi cha Mungu. And the foundation of all morality in society. Na ndio msingi wa hali ya kimaadili katika jamii yote. Let's look up into heaven. Hebu tuangalie juu mbinguni. You want to look up into heaven tonight? Je, unaweza ukatazama juu mbinguni jioni ya leo? How many of you want to look up into heaven tonight? Wangapi mnataka kutazama juu mbinguni jioni ya leo? You want to look up into heaven. Je, unataka kutazama juu mbinguni? Here's what the Bible says. Hiki ndicho Biblia isemayo. Revelation 11 verse 19. Ufunuo moja mstari wa 19 The temple of God was opened in heaven Hekalu la Mungu lilikuwa wazi mbinguni Now when the temple of God is opened in heaven Sasa hekalu la Mungu likiwa wazi mbinguni What did John see Yohana aliona nini? The Bible says. Biblia inasema the ark of God's covenant was seen in his temple. Sanduku la agano lake lilionekana ndani ya hekalu lake. So what did John see when he looked into heaven? Hivyo Yohana aliona nini alipoangalia mbinguni? He saw the ark of God's covenant. Aliona sanduku la agano la Mungu. Tell me what's in the ark of God's covenant. Hebu niambie nini kitu gani kilicho ndani ya sanduku la agano? Ndani ya sanduku la agano la Mungu lina nini? the commandments of God. The, say, how do I say the commandments of God? Amri kumi za Mungu. Amri kumi za Mungu. Za Mungu. You got it. Right. Say together the commandments of God with me. Amri kumi za, za Mungu. Once again. Hebu tuseme pamoja. Amri kumi za Mungu. Where are those commandments? Hizo amri ziko wapi? They're in the temple in heaven. Zipo kwenye hekalu mbinguni. Did God ever change them? Je, Mungu alipata kuzibadilisha wakati wote? Did God ever change his commandments? Je, kuna wakati wote Mungu alizibadilisha? Tell me Mwanza, did God ever change them? Hebu Mwanza niambieni, je, zilipata kubadilishwa wakati wote? Maasha. No, he never changed them. Kamwe hakubadilisha. Does God by his grace lead us to obey them? Je, Mungu kwa neema yake anatutaka tuzitii? What do you think? God through his grace leads us to be obedient. Mungu kwa neema yake anatuongoza hadi katika kuzitii. The ark of God's covenant contains God's law. Unaona katika amri kumi za Mungu tunaona sheria hiyo ya Mungu. The law of God, sheria ya Mungu, is the basis of God's government. Ni msingi wa serikali ya Mungu. The law of God, sheria ya Mungu, is God's love in practice. Ni upendo wa Mungu katika matendo. God's law is the foundation of his throne. Na unajua sheria ya Mungu ndio msingi wa kiti chake cha enzi. And you can no more change the law of God as you can knock God off his throne. Na kama ambavyo huwezi kumuondoa Mungu katika kiti chake cha enzi, huwezi pia kubadilisha sheria yake. Now judgment and law. Sasa sheria na na hukumu are all part of the gospel of Jesus. Ni vyo, vyote pamoja ni sehemu ya injili ya Yesu. Now the Bible defines what sin is. Biblia sasa inafafanua maana ya dhambi. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 it says. Katika Yohana wa kwanza sura ya 3 mstari wa 4 inasema. Whoever commits sin Inasema yeyote atenda aye dhambi. Commits lawlessness. Ambayo inamaanisha uasi. Sin is lawlessness or breaking God's law. Dhambi ni uasi au kuvunja sheria ya Mungu. What if you have 15 cattle? Habari gani kama una ng'ombe 15? Pastor Robert Tavako, how many cattle are we pretending you have? How many? 15. 15. 15. 15. So he has 15 cattle. Mimi nina ng'ombe 15. Suppose I am his neighbor. Hebu fikiri kama mimi ni jirani yake. Halafu ninaangalia ng'ombe wake. Ninaangalia nasema ile ng'ombe amenilepa. Ah, amenawili yule ng'ombe. Ninayo ng'ombe nao 15 ng'ombe 15. Na amelala pale. Na nimelala chini ya mti wa mwembe pale. Nimelala chini ya kivuli wakati jua linawaka. I hear him sleeping. Can you how, how, how Tanzanian snore? Snore for me. Na koroma hivyo. 
<laughs> he's sleeping well. I Ni, see one of his cows. Naangalia ngombe zile. I don't think it's wrong to take one of his cows. Nafikiri kwamba si vibaya kuchukua moja ya ngombe zake. Anao 15 ngombe au ninao 15. If I don't think it's wrong to take one of his cows. Kama nafikiri kwamba si makosa kuchukua moja wale ngombe. Is it still wrong to take his cow? Je bado ni makosa kuchukua moja wa ngombe wale? If I don't think it's wrong, is it still wrong? Je kama mimi sifikiri kwamba ni makosa, je sio makosa? If you don't think it's wrong to steal something from the shop, is it still wrong? Kama we unafikiri sio makosa kuchukua au kuiba kitu kutoka kwenye duka, if bado a, ni makosa. If a man does not think it's wrong to commit adultery, is it still wrong? Hata kama mtu anafikiria kwamba sio makosa kuzini, bado ni makosa. You see we do not define sin. Sasa unaona sisi hatuwezi kuitafsiri au kuielezea dhambi kwa maneno yetu. God defines sin. Mungu anaelezea dhambi. When you think it's wrong to steal the cow. Na, na kama unafikiri kwamba ni makosa kuiba ngombe. When you think it's wrong to steal something from the shop. Kama unafikiri kwamba ni makosa kuiba kitu kwenye duka la mtu. When you th- whether you think it's wrong to commit adultery. Kama unafikiri ni makosa kutenda dhambi ya uzinzi. God says that sin. Mungu analisema hilo ni dhambi and, and the wages of sin is eternal death. Na madhara au matokeo ya dhambi ni mauti ya milele. God's grace. Neema ya Mungu leads us to obedience. Inatuongoza katika kutii. Sin is breaking God's law whether we think it is or not. Dhambi ni uvunjwaji wa sheria ya Mungu uwe unapenda hivyo au la. God's law is his eternal moral standard that defines sin. Sheria ya Mungu ni ya milele na hata hivyo hata kama ungekuwa mfanyaji inabaki hivyo. The book of Revelation. Kitabu cha ufunuo. Describes a people kinaelezea watu that will be obedient to God. Watu watakao kuwa watifu kwa Mungu. God's law. Watu watakao kuwa watifu kwa sheria. Watakuwa na furaha. It's the pathway to happiness. Ni njia inayowafikisha kwenye furaha na raha. And love always leads us to obedience. Na upendo huo unatuongoza katika kutii. The more I love God. Kadiri ninavyompenda Mungu. The more I want to obey God. Ndivyo nitakavyozidi kumtii. Can you say with me? Je waweza ukasema nani? Love leads to obedience. Upendo unapeleka katika kutii. Together. Hebu tuseme pamoja. Upendo unapeleka katika kutii. Once again. Hebu tuseme mara nyingine. Upendo unapeleka katika kutii. The more we love God. Kadiri tumpendavyo Mungu. The more we want to obey God. Ndivyo tunakavyomtii Listen to what Jesus says. Hebu sikiliza kile ambacho Yesu anasema. John 14 verse 15. Yohana sura ya 14 mstari wa 15. Jesus says, if you love me. Yesu anasema kama ukinipenda. If you love me. Kama unanipenda. If you love me. Kama unanipenda. How many of you love Jesus? Wangapi mnampenda Yesu? If you love me Jesus says. Ye- Yesu anasema kama ukinipenda my commandments Zishike amri zangu If we love Jesus Kama tunampenda Yesu We're always led to obedience Daima tutaongozwa kufikia katika kutii Now I obey God Sasa naam namtii Mungu Not to earn my salvation Si kwa sababu nataka kuupata uokovu wangu But I obey God Silipi uokovu namtii Mungu Christ has changed me Kwa sababu Kristo amenibadilisha I obey God Ninamtimu not in order to be saved si kwa sababu ili niokolewe but because i am saved lakini kwa sababu nina nimeokolewa now in first john chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 katika yohana wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa 3 na wa 4 the bible says this biblia inasema hivi now by this we know that we know him anasema katika hili twajua ya kwamba tumemjua yeye what is the evidence that we know god je kuna uthibitisho gani kwamba tunamjua mungu if we keep his commandments. Anasema kama tukizishika amri zake. Now listen to what the Bible says. Hebu sikiliza kile ambacho Mungu anasema. Don't miss this. Hebu silipoteze hili. He that says I know him. Unaposema unamjua yeye. And does not keep his commandments. Anasema anayesema nimemjua wala azishike amri zake. He's a liar. Ni muongo. And the truth is not in him. Na wala ukweli haimo ndani yake. So if I say I know God hivyo unapomwambia Mungu but i rebel against his commandments ninaposema haya lakini na, 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 na asi sheria zake what does the bible say i am biblia inasema mimi ni nani what does the bible say i am biblia inasema mimi ni nani 
Mongo. Uh, Mongo. Mongo. Mongo is a liar, right? He's a liar, yes, that's right. I don't want to be a Mongo, do you? I don't want to be a liar, do you? I don't want to lie to God, do you? Jesus says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. You see, some people have a strange idea. They think law is part of the Old Testament, grace is part of the New Testament. Let's clear that up tonight. What is the role of God's law? The Bible makes it plain. Biblia inaliweka ili Warumi sura ya 3 mstari wa 20. By the law is the knowledge of sin. Warumi sura ya 3 20 nasema kupitia kwa sheria tunaijua dhambi. So God's law Hivyo sheria ya Mungu defines what sin is. Inatusaidia kufafanua maana ya dhambi. God's law tells us this is right, this is wrong. Sheria ya Mungu inatuambia hiki ni sahihi na hiki sio sahihi. Now what would happen if you would do away with God's law. If by the law there is the knowledge of sin, if you do away with God's law, there is no sin. And if there is no sin, you don't need a savior. So if you don't need a savior, Jesus wouldn't have to die. Yesu haikumpasa Yesu afe. So if you do away with the law, hivyo kama unatupilia mbali sheria. You do away with the need of Jesus. Kama utatupilia mbali hitaji la Yesu. Jesus died because we broke the law. Yesu alikufa kwa sababu tulivunja sheria. Now listen to what the apostle Paul says. Hebu sikiliza mtume Paulo asemavyo. Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Warumi sura ya saba mstari wa saba. Paul says I would not have known sin except through the law. Anasema singalitambua dhambi isipokuwa kwa sheria. So the law defines sin. Hivyo sheria inaeleza maana ya dhambi. Romans 7 verse 7 goes on. Warumi saba sura sura ile saba ya saba inaendelea. I would not have known covetousness except the law said you shall not covet. Kwa kuwa singalijua kutamani kama torati singalisema usitamani so as christians hivyo kama wa kristo tunaompenda yesu we are led to obedience tunaongozwa kufikia katika kutii now what is the role of grace sasa nafasi ya neema hiyo wapi ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says wa efeso sura ya pili mstari wa 8 na wa 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith anasema kwa sababu kwa imani It is the gift of God. So salvation comes through God's grace. What is grace? Grace is God's mercy. Grace is God's pardon. Neema ni ni msamaha wa Grace is God's forgiveness. Neema ni msamaha wa Grace is God's power. Neema ni nguvu Grace is God's love. Neema ni upendo wa Mungu. One day in Boston. Siku moja katika jiji la Boston. On the east coast of America. Katika sehemu ya pwani ya mashariki ya Marekani. I was meeting like this. Nilikuwa katika mkutano kama huu. A young man was coming to those meetings. Kijana mmoja alikuwa akija katika mikutano hii. And he had a terrible problem. Na alikuwa na tatizo kubwa sana. He started smoking when he was 13 or 14 years old. Alianza kuvuta sigara akiwa na miaka 13 14 hivi. Mrs. Finley tonight talked about the harmful effects of smoking. Jioni ya leo mama Finley alizungumzia juu ya hatari This young man was chained to the habit of smoking. Kijana huyu alikuwa amewekwa katika utumwa na mnyororo wa tabia na mazoea ya baba ya utaji wa sigara. Alivuta pakiti mbili za sigara kwa siku. He was destroying his health. Alikuwa akiharibu afya yake. But he wanted forgiveness from Jesus. Lakini alitaka msamaha kutoka kwa Yesu. He had been smoking for 15 years. Alikuwa amevuta sigara kwa miaka 15. And he came to me. 
We began talking to him. Helping him to know he could make a choice. Helping him to know the power of God could come down in his life. Helping him to know that Christ would forgive him. He came with his tobacco. Now whatever changed you, it may be witchcraft. It may be the charms. You can come and burn them and destroy them. It may, it may be alcohol. Jesus wants to deliver you. This young man came with his tobacco. He put it down on the floor. We began to pray. And I said to him, you pray first. He prayed like this. Dear Jesus, I am so weak. Dear Jesus, I smoked for 15 years. Dear Jesus, I don't think I can give it up. Dear Jesus, tobacco is stronger than me. I was on my knees next to the man. I could not take it any longer. I shook the man. Stop praying. You're going to be worse after you pray. You're going to be worse after you pray. Because you are just reinforcing what the devil is telling you in your mind. Get on your knees. Pray like this. Dear Jesus, you will forgive me. Dear Jesus, you are stronger than this habit. Dear Jesus, I know right now you will give me your power. I know right now you will give me your strength. I know right now that through your grace, I can be obedient to you. That man began to pray like that. Jesus, I am weak. But you are strong. Jesus, you're stronger than this habit. Jesus, you're delivering me right now. And that day, that man overcame the habit of tobacco. When you pray in faith, and you pray in the power of God, he will deliver you and cause you to live the obedient life. Does grace do away with God's law? Not a minute of it. Grace enables us to keep God's law. Romans chapter 3 verse 31. Here's what the Bible says. Do we then make void the law through faith? Paul says certainly not. What is the question? Do we make void the law through faith? What is the answer? Hasha. Hasha. Never. Say it with me. Hasha. Hasha. Do we make? I'll ask the question. You give the Bible answer. Do we make void the law through faith? Amen. Amen. Amina. On the contrary, we establish the law. Paul, Paul says when we're saved by grace through faith. We want to be obedient in our life. What does Jesus say? Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 17. Do not think I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. Did Jesus come to destroy the law? Did Jesus come to destroy the law? 
kuiharibu sheria ya Mungu. He says. Anasema. Don't think I came to destroy the law. Wala msifikiri kwamba nilikuja kuibatilisha sheria. Jesus came to teach us how to keep his law. Yesu alikuja kutufundisha namna ya kuitunza kuishika sheria. He says I didn't come to destroy it but to fulfill it. Nimekuja sio kuibatilisha bali kuitimiliza. Now notice what Paul says in Romans 6 verse 14. Hebu angalia anachosema katika Warumi 6 aya 14. Paul says sin shall not have dominion over you. Paul anasema dhambi haitawatawalani. The chains of sin can be broken. Minyororo ya dhambi yaweza kuvunjwa. The bondage of sin can be gone. Utumwa wa dhambi utapotea. Because you're not under the condemnation of the law. Kwa sababu hui tena chini ya hukumu ya sheria. Grace will pardon your sin. Kwa sababu dhambi dhambi yako itasamehewa kutokana na neema. Grace will forgive your sin. Neema ya Mungu itasamehe dhambi yako. God's grace will change your life. Na neema ya Mungu itabadilisha maisha yako. A number of years ago. Miaka kadhaa iliyopita. There was a great American kulikuwa na mhubiri mkuu wa kimarekani he preached to large audiences like this alikuwa akihubiri kwenye mikutano ilio ya watu wengi kama huu his name was dwight l moody jina lake alifahamika kama dwight l moody as he preached thousands of people would come to christ alipohubiri maelfu ya watu walimjia kristo one night as he was preaching jioni moja alipokuwa akihubiri after the sermon baada ya hubiri a mother wanted to bring her son to meet with the evangelist. Mama moja alitamani kwa kumleta mwanae aje kumsalimia mhubiri And she brought her son up. Na kamleta mwanae pale. And he looked at the evangelist. Na kamtazama mwinjilisti. The evangelist smiled at him. Na mwinjilisti akatabasama. And mama said. Na mama kasema. Son. Mwanangu. Shake the evangelist hand hebu mshike mkono mwinjilisti and the little boy went like this with his fist na yule kijana mvulana mdogo akafanya tu hivi akiwa amekunja ngumi yake it wasn't done rudely hakuifanya kwa ukatili but he just had his fist like this lakini alikuwa tu ameshikilia mkono wake amefumbata hivi you may never get another opportunity. Unaweza usipate fursa nyingine. Shake the evangelist hand. Hebu mshike mkono mwinjilisti. The little boy. Huyu mvulana mdogo. Took his hands. Ali na mikono yake. And he put them behind his back. Alichukua akaiweka nyuma ya mgongo wake. And the mother was embarrassed. Na mama akawa ameaibika. And she took the boy's hand. Akaendelea akamshika mkono mtoto. And she began to open it like this. Akaanza kufungua vidole vya vya mkono wake. And in the little boy's hand. Na ndani ya mkono wa huyu mtoto there were some little round marbles. Kulikuwa na gololi ndogo ndogo. And the boy thought na huyu kijana mvulana akafikiri. That the evangelist alikuwa amefikiri kwamba was going to take his marbles. Angechukua gololi zake. What are you holding on to? Ni kitu gani unachongangania? What are you holding on to? Ni kitu gani unachokingangania? What have you not given to Jesus yet? Ni kitu gani ambacho bado hujampatia Yesu? Are you afraid? to give your whole life to Jesus Are you afraid to say Jesus everything is yours Unaogopa kumwambia Yesu kila kitu ni chako Jesus forgive me Yesu nisamehe Jesus change me Yesu nibadilishe Jesus make me over inside Yesu hebu unifanye niwe upya Jesus I want to be obedient to you Yesu nataka kuwa mtiifu kwako Is there somebody here tonight Je yupo mtu mmoja leo jioni That there's some hidden sin in your life ambaye dhambi fulani imejificha ndani maisha yako Nobody else knows about it Hakuna mwingine yote aijuae But God knows about it Lakini Mungu anaijua And you want Jesus na unamtaka Yesu To forgive you of that sin ili akusamehe hiyo dhambi. Unamtaka Yesu. To give you the power to overcome that sin. Akupatie nguvu ya kuishinda dhambi hiyo. Is there somebody here tonight? Yupo mtu hapa jioni. That you've been struggling with something. Ambaye umekuwa ukipambana na jambo. You've really been battling with it. Umekuwa ukipambana na hili. And you have not been able to overcome it. Lakini daima kama hujawahi kuishinda hili. But you want Jesus to touch you. Lakini unataka Yesu akuguse. You want Jesus to give you his power. Unataka Yesu aku is there somebody here tonight that you've been afraid afraid just to give your whole self to Jesus but tonight is your night 
Lakini usiku leo ni usiku wako. Tonight is your night. Usiku leo ni wako. You're watching in an orphanage. Unaniangalia katika kituo cha You're watching in a school. Unaniangalia pale shule. You're watching in a marketplace. Unaniangalia pale sokoni. You're watching with five bars surrounding you. Unaangalia ukiwa umezungukwa na vilabu vitano hapo. Jesus can deliver you from that bondage tonight. Yesu anaweza kukuokoa na kukomboa kutoka kwenye You're watching in a church. Unatazama ukiwa kanisani. A friend has invited you to their home. Rafiki amekukaribisha kwenye nyumba yake. But tonight, jioni ya leo, you need deliverance. Unataka ukombozi. You cannot do it yourself. Huwezi kufanya hili pekee. You are much too weak. Una udhaifu sana. You need power tonight. Unahitaji nguvu jioni ya leo. You need strength tonight. Unahitaji uwezo jioni ya leo. And you just want to lift your hands to heaven. Unataka kuinua tu mikono yako. Wherever you are tonight. Papate ulipo jioni ya leo. Right here in this auditorium. Katika mkutano huu hapa hapa. Do you need strength tonight? Je, unahitaji nguvu jioni ya leo? Do you need deliverance tonight? Je, unahitaji ukombozi jioni ya leo? Is there a secret sin you want to give up tonight? Unahitaji ile dhambi ya siri tupiliwe mbali jioni ya leo. Lift your hand to heaven. Hebu inua mikono yako mbinguni. And say Jesus I believe. Mwambie Yesu ninaamini. Say it together. Sema nami. Jesus I believe. Yesu ninaamini. Again. Sema tena. Jesus I believe. Yesu ninaamini. What do you believe? Kitu gani unaamini? You believe you're being forgiven. Unaamini ya kwamba unasamehewa. You believe he's giving you power. Unaamini atakupa uwezo. When we have faith tukiwa na imani it works a miracle in our life unafanyika muujiza maishani mwetu because faith opens our heart kwa sababu imani inafungua moyo yetu to receive the power of god kuipokea nguvu ya Mungu say tonight sema jioni ya leo loudly kwa sauti jesus i believe yesu ninaamini When you say that, na unaposema hilo, the power of God's coming down upon you. Nguvu ya Mungu itashuka Power of God is coming down upon you. Nguvu ya Mungu itakushukia wewe. His strength is coming into your life. Nguvu hii inakuja maishani mwako. His grace is forgiving your sin. Neema yake inasamehe dhambi yako. He is moving in your life. Anafanya kazi ndani ya maisha yako. As I pray. Hebu tuombe. I'm going to pray for you right now. Nataka kuomba kwa ajili yako jioni ya leo sasa. thousands of hands are lifted. Yesu mikono maelfu imeinuliwa. Your power is coming down. Nguvu yako inashuka. Jesus we believe. Yesu tunaamini. We believe your grace forgives us. Tunaamini ya kwamba neema yako inatusamehe. We believe your love pardons us. Tunaamini upendo wako unatusamehe. We believe your power changes us. Tunaamini nguvu yako inatubadilisha. Grant to us your peace. Tunakwenda kuosha mikono yetu. Grant to us your strength. Tayari kutufanya kuwa wapya na kutupa nguvu. May we live obedient godly lives. Hebu tafadhali ishi maisha ya utiifu ya utaua. Walking with you. Kutukitembea pamoja nawe. Now nawe. and forever. Sasa na milele. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. We say together. Tunasema pamoja. I believe. Ninaamini. I believe. Ninaamini. And we leave this place. Na tunaondoka mahali hapa. Knowing tukijua that our hand ya kwamba mkono wetu is in the hand of Jesus. Umeshikamana na mkono wa Yesu. Now and forever. Sasa na hata milele. Amen. Amina.